Toyota is the predominant choice for outdoor and overland enthusiasts. Here's why. What Toyota has gotten right more than anything else is their drivetrains. Name a Toyota four-wheel drive with a notoriously bad engine, transmission, or rear end. You can't. You can't name one unless you go all the way back to the kind of love it or hate it 3 liter V6 in the second gen 4Runner and Toyota pickup which was kind of known for blowing head gaskets. But for as far back as you can go, Toyota has been producing bulletproof engines. And they don't just stick to a one size fits all approach. Across their various pickups and SUVs, they've made reliable four, six, and eight cylinder engines. Starting with the unkillable four cylinder 22RE and going all the way through their UR series V8s, Toyota makes the world's longest lasting engines. If you don't believe me, you can go take a look at the renowned million mile V8 motor pulled from a Toyota Tundra. That truck made it over a million miles on the original motor. With over a 20 year history of pumping out these engines, there's a platform for everyone. And don't forget the Lexus versions of these vehicles. The great thing about all these engines is that you can find them in multiple different vehicles across Toyota and Lexus's offerings. Whatever kind of engine you have your heart set on, you can find it in multiple different vehicles with different sizes and cab configurations. Late model Toyotas start narrowing down engine options, namely to only the UR V8s and the GR V6s. But if you're looking at like 1995 to 2010 Toyotas, there's seemingly a plethora of choices between the R series, VZ, UZ, GR, and UR engines among models like the 4Runner, Tacoma, T100, Tundra, Sequoia, Land Cruiser, and FJ Cruiser. And don't forget the Lexus LX and GX series SUVs. These engines also show up predominantly as naturally aspirated. They have fewer moving parts and are generally overbuilt for the amount of power they produce. And if you're lucky, you can find factory supercharged engines, which are rare, but awesome finds. Overall, you can't find a flaw in Toyota's engine offerings. I challenge you to say that about any other company that produces as many SUVs and pickups. Nissan's VQ40 platforms dealt with notorious strawberry milkshake of death issues for years. And Ford's Triton Motors all but famous for its ejecto cedo cuz spark plugs and timing issues. And if you think I'm not gonna make fun of Jeep, go on Facebook Marketplace and look at Wranglers with over 200,000 miles. You won't find many. And Toyota isn't just known for its reliable gas engines. Ask the boys down under about all their amazing diesel offerings that we never got here in North America. If at this point in the video you're finding this information useful, please leave a thumbs up on the video so that I know you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. The other thing Toyota got right was suspension and chassis. See, Toyota figured out early on that there was something special about double wishbone suspension. So what did they do? They threw it onto the front end of almost every 4x4 they've created since the mid-90s. With the exception of a few torsion bar equipped trucks or solid axle Land Cruisers, Toyota chose a coil sprung independent front end for their 4x4s, as well as live axles in the rear with either linked setups and coil springs or simple leaf spring setups for all their pickups. Independent suspension is well known for its ride quality, while live axles are renowned for their strength and off-road capabilities. Going with an IFS and solid rear axle setup is a great compromise between on-road comfort and off-road performance. For people needing more out of the front end, the double wishbone setup is easily modified to produce more wheel travel. Compared to competitors that retain the solid front axle, road manners and comfort are greatly improved by the IFS. You won't find any Pentastar powered death wobble here. All of the suspension is also attached to a body on frame construction, which is not the only way to build an off-road vehicle, but it's certainly preferred. It's generally heavier duty and more durable. The main thing people will always complain about with Toyota is the prices they command on the used market. Unfortunately, the word is out on Toyotas. Everyone knows about the build quality and they're the only manufacturer who makes four-wheel drive vehicles that reliably last into the 200,000 mile range. While old Toyotas are certainly expensive, it's important to remember that they also hold resale value incredibly well. You may buy high, but you can also guarantee that you'll sell high, and in some cases even higher than what you bought it for. The dip of the used Toyota market was years ago, and truthfully, used Toyotas are commanding more money in recent years than they were in the mid-2010s. So we're stuck with higher prices and premiums for these vehicles, but I'd argue you still won't find anything that stacks up against the reliability and the durability of these vehicles. That's why Toyota makes sense for overland and outdoor enthusiasts. If you intend to spend days at a time out of cell service, you're going to pick a vehicle that can get there and get back without any issues. Warranties are great, but there is not a Jeep dealership at the trailhead. You're also going to pick a vehicle that can handle the terrain and road trip associated with getting outdoors. Toyotas make comfortable, practical daily drivers while still being able to handle demanding weekend trips. And they'll do this week after week for decades. You can't beat the durability of a Toyota. I'd love to hear what Toyotas you guys are driving, what you've done to them. Let me know in the comments what kind of Toyota you have and what you like about it. Another thing to note is that Toyota has traditionally made slightly smaller pickups and SUVs than its domestic counterparts. Vehicles like the first-gen Tacoma and first-gen Tundra feel smaller compared to mid-size and full-size trucks of today, but these smaller vehicles are lighter, nimbler, and overall better suited for off-road terrain. They were always equipped with good ground clearance and low-range four-wheel drive, which is exactly what you're looking for. 
So where did Toyota fail? There are only a few glaringly obvious spots. One was the lower ball joint design they utilized at the turn of the century. 96 to 04 Tacomas, 2000 to 2006 Tundras, 96 to 02 Forerunners, and 2000 to 2007 Sequoias all used this hang from the socket ball joint design. I honestly have no idea how this design left the factory compared to the stack on top ball joint that Toyota replaced it with. Some vehicles will still have recalls that can be performed on them, but in any case, you have to replace these on a regular service interval, likely in the 50k to 100,000 mile range depending on use. Failure of these ball joints is simply too catastrophic to neglect this maintenance. It's not an expensive or difficult part to replace, it's just a more severe failure than on other vehicles. Depending on the model and era, you might hear people who are dissatisfied with the interiors, particularly the legroom. Toyotas aren't a great fit for tall people, bottom line. I've also heard that the 3rd gen 4Runner and 1st gen Tacoma cup holders suck. People will almost always complain about the horsepower and MPG on the V6 options. This is true even of the later model GR V6 engines, which are you're looking at in any kind of late model Tacoma, late model 4Runner. Unfortunately, that's what you get on a super reliable and overbuilt vehicle. You can't have it all, so the MPG usually suffers while still not making a lot of power. But whether you need a pickup, small SUV, or a three-row family hauler, you can get a body-on-frame four-wheel drive vehicle with tremendous reliability and longevity. You'll get the comfortable independent front suspension, the capable solid rear axle, and you'll get low-range four-wheel drive and great crown clearance. This is a great value and I highly recommend Toyotas to people looking for a simple turnkey outdoor vehicle. And here's the thing with Toyota, it's not like they did this for 10 years. Toyota, I kid you not, has been doing this since they made the Land Cruiser, since they made the Toyota pickup. This predates the Tacomas and the 4Runners we see today. You can go all the way back to the 80s and get your basic regular cab Toyota pickup and you can go all the way up to now, you can get your 2020 4Runner. These are solid vehicles, the build quality is quite impressive, they are very durable, they will put up to abuse, and they will still hold their value. You can beat the crap out of a Toyota, wash it, list it on Craigslist, and still get your money out of it. These vehicles hold value well, they are incredibly durable, and Toyota has been doing this for decades. Other automakers have not put up this kind of lineup, this kind of reliability, for so long. It is why Toyota has great brand loyalty, and tons of enthusiasts in the outdoor, recreational, overland, and off-road community. They simply have made too many engines, too many platforms for there not to be a Toyota that fits your needs. So they're a great place to start. If you've never bought an off-road vehicle and you wanna start somewhere simple, get a Toyota. Like I said, great daily drivers. Compare it to a Jeep that's bouncy and Spartan interior, super uncomfortable, tons of road noise. You will not regret buying a Toyota. You can always get something else if you really need a solid front axle but an IFS Toyota, a Land Cruiser with a solid front axle, there are so many good options. If you're particularly interested in Toyota trucks, boy, do I have the video for you. This is my first gen Tundra. In this video, I'll show you why I highly recommend it, but there's plenty of great Toyotas out there to pick from. See you in the next video.